Hey guys, what's happening? So, it's been a few months since I made an RC car video. Um, so I bought these uh, RC cars about a year ago. And I bought a bunch of nitro engines. Kind of got <laughs> had a little addiction going on there. Uh, but actually, I had bought a ton of RC cars on, uh, on eBay. Like right after the pandemic hit. Um, I guess everybody's like going through their stuff and selling their stuff. So I only actually kept the two best cars. I have a, a BMT 984. Obviously nitros, and I also have a uh, Mugen MBX5. So this was an interesting truck. This actually had a. Uh, it was like one of the first truckies that came out. Um, let me show that real fast. So it's basically pretty nice. It has actually uh, the guy had actually upgraded a lot of the stuff. Uh, I actually got that King Head thing right there, uh, but I actually had bought a bunch of uh, nitro engines on eBay that I want to try. Um, I'll show you this in a couple seconds here, but uh, yeah, I'd like to get this thing going again. I mean, this thing is fun, you know. Yeah, this thing was already highly customized when I got it. I, I just added a few things to it, you know, upgraded all the servos to like steel servos, and uh, you know, upgraded the receiver. So, all right, let's get it going. Here's my nitro engine collection. I designed those stands in uh, Fusion 360. They're on my uh, Thingiverse page, but here are the engines I want to try in the Mugen. This is actually a 25 that I bought in a lot. Uh, Go, so it's probably some Chinese brand, but uh, and then I also have this Associate Electronics 28 that I want to try. So this is actually the one I'm going to try. But that's the original engine that actually came out of it. That was a Force 28. I was actually running at 21 in the Mugen for a while, but it just didn't seem like I had enough torque and power, so... Um, let me get this going. We'll take it apart and clear it up. All right, let's get this head off here. Yeah, they definitely put these. Uh, this is a six bolt head, whereas most of the uh, other engines, like the, I guess it seems like the OS style is the six bolt, and like the Italian style is like the the four bolt. All right, so let's get the head off for the first time. Right, there's no. There's no compression ring. I mean, I, I don't see like a like a copper or like a seal. Let's see. I don't see any scoring. Ob obvious scoring. You're probably not gonna see it in the camera. Um, yeah, a little, no, a little. No, that's, that's okay. That's normal. Um, but what's interesting is I noticed that the uh, the clutch material has like this groove in it. I've never seen a clutch like that before. Um, but it feels like it's a some sort of synthetic material. It's not a, it's not metallic. So, but I don't think this this uh, flywheel is gonna be big enough. My car for my bump box. So hopefully I can get this bigger flywheel on there. That's gonna maybe clear the carb. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna get this down. Take the back off. Yeah, then also I don't like these uh, starts because obviously this is this is drag. I mean this will. Get a small one, but this this is actually creates a lot of drag. So um, I'm I'm gonna use it, but I'm gonna clean everything up nice and clean. So I actually use diesel, but I'll show you that. So I gotta get the uh, sleeve out of there, take it all apart, take it tear it down. So I actually use a uh, car power steering puller, and it seems to be perfect for removing flywheels. So I think they had the carburetor too tight on there, it created a lot of scoring like that on there on the edge right there. So I'm gonna have to polish that up. Yeah, the guy just had this too tight. I mean, I couldn't even get it off there. So, uh, yeah, look at that all that's scoring in there. If you can see that, it's so on the back. It looks like this. Uh, one of these was stripped out. But that's actually that's an M3 right there. And I think the rest are probably M2.5. Yeah, I hate when they use silicone in there. That defeats the purpose of the seal. Alright, so, yeah, uh, right, let's see how it looks in there. It looks good though. It's printed freely. You can see it in the light. Okay. Awesome. Alright, so I'm going to get this thing off here. Get the uh, piston out. Oh, the sleeve is really stuck in there. So I'm gonna use a little, uh, like a little brass 
punch. I'm going to try to get into the sleeve. I don't want to use steel because I don't want to mess up the sleeve if I don't have to. It's going to be difficult. So uh, there was a was a gasket. Okay. I can kind of grab my vice grips, maybe. There we go. I have a little tape on there. Hopefully, prevent marring if I can. Yeah, I don't think this thing is ever. Oh, maybe it's been taken apart. I don't know. There it goes. out if I can that's pretty dirty I my actually get my other hammer here yeah everything's really stuck like I said who knows how long and this thing probably hasn't been taken apart in 10 years I mean, it's obviously not a racing crank because there's no crank work done to it <laughs> so yeah, there's not even like the filler. Like normally you'd see like the really like, nice filler, and, like the Italian made ones. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to dip this in a. I'm going to try to get as much dirt as I can off there first, rub it off, but it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to put this in a thing of diesel. Alright, so here's my ultrasonic cleaner, and I actually have it filled with diesel. And I use diesel. Um, actually, I, I prefer to use gas. It's actually thinner, but. Problem is, it's too volatile for one of these uh, ultrasonic cleaners. Uh, you start a fire. Whereas this is definitely not nearly as flammable. Um, so I'm gonna put all that stuff in there. I'm gonna let it heat it up. To go. Let's this here. Let's soak. Actually, I might not even bother taking the bearings out. That's one of the reasons. Why, another reason why I use diesel and don't use water. Um, so if you're gonna keep the bearings in, you don't really want to put water in your bearings. All right, sleeve, back plate. I'm gonna keep an eye on that that gasket. I think I'll just throw everything in there, except for the carburetor. I like to do the carburetor separate, separately. So I'm probably going to have to fish out the, the bolt with my magnet. These are going to fall through that little grate right there. Get all that in there. Yeah, I'll do the carburetor separate and the, probably the clutch separate. Alright, another screw. Yeah, Alright, all right, let's get this going. I'm going to do it for, uh, do for 30. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move it around. I like I'm gonna flip the block over after so a few minutes. Well, this thing doesn't exactly sound great. <laughs> I mean, the motor's going on. All right, cool. Let it sit. All right, while well, the other parts are cleaning, I'm going to make a note of uh, the high-speed needle and low-speed needle. So I want to make sure that, I mean, this guy probably obviously had it going. I think it's, this is kind of interesting. No, most carburetors don't actually have a built-in return spring. So I have an, a second ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to use water and soap, like Dawn just soap. And I actually created this. It's on my Thingiverse page. It's like a basket. Yeah, I think this one actually works better than the other one. I think the motor might be going on the other one. I love being able to watch the dirt coming off that thing. Yeah, I also I wasn't I didn't really want to mess with the uh, anodizing on the head, so sometimes I can create like a an issue. I can remove the anodize anodization. All right, there it is. A couple of days since I was on the last video, but kind of letting this dry for a couple of days. So I have the carburetor stuff, the head, clutch stuff. That was the original clutch. That's probably what I'm going to put on there. Just so I have easier, uh, it can hit the bump box easier. Probably end up putting that new one on there. And then there's the body piston sleeve. This got actually nice and clean. Got all the dirt off there. It's almost like it's... It, I can't tell if this is like magnesium or aluminum. Or some sort of coating on it, you know. 
because normally I would expect to, if it, this was like uh, unfinished aluminum, I would expect to see some sort of that, um, you know, that white flakiness, you know what I mean, of the, uh, the aluminum, but no, I don't see that anywhere, so don't know for sure. All right. Okay, so I'm going to be using my tray flow here, and I'm just going to be lubing up everything here as I put it back together, you know, all the piss in, sleeve, I should probably, yeah, I got the crankshaft in, it's been nice and freely. Bearings feel good. I don't feel any flat spots. All right, no, uh, it doesn't feel like there's any grit in there. So that's good. Piston in. Yeah, that's how we get the sleeve in here. There we go. All right, cool. Yeah, nice and smooth. Yeah, before it was all like stiff. All right. Well, the pinch doesn't feel like it has a lot of pinch. I mean, it will kind of bring it up a little bit, but you know, like normally you'd feel a lot of pinch. Like we'd almost want to push the sleeve out. It wants to do a little bit, but so I mean, this thing could be worn out. Who knows? I'll feel like, once I get a glow plug in there, I'll feel like the compression. Alright, so this is why these things suck right here. Um, the one-way bearings, the electric starters. I, I use a bump box, so you don't really need that, but this is actually where all the drag happens. I mean, this is connected directly to the crankshaft right there. You can't see it, but this basically spins around with the engine, creating a lot of drag. So you're definitely losing power with one of these things, but you got to make sure it's really well looped up. You know, um, any sort of sticking would actually, like, rob your horsepower. Alright, so I know I'm against this, but I'm going to use a little RTV. This is automotive RTV sealant to um, put on the back here. But normally I'm really against this because this could get sucked into the uh, crank frame. I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Slight mount. Really, I'm just more worried about the O-ring. Alright, so now it's time to get the uh, cooling head back on. Even one of these long filts definitely makes it easier to get the holes lined up. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down until I get them all in there. Okay. You want to do a crisscross pattern when you do actually uh, tighten it down. Alright, so I'm going to do a crisscross pattern to do the final torque a little bit at a time. Alright, so i got to put the clutch back together now. So this was the original flywheel, and that's the flywheel that I use. This actually gives me more room for the bump box. So I'm assuming this guy was probably using some sort of like, maybe the deck starter, I guess? I'm not sure, but this is pretty tiny, so... This won't go deep enough to catch the wheel in the bump box. But also, I'm, I'm guessing he probably had this on a buggy. Because the uh, clutch that he did have, the bell housing, actually had more teeth. So more teeth will give you better top end, but you're going to lose torque. So I guess I'd rather have the torque, and then if I want to change it, I can go to more teeth here. I got the clutch shoes on, and make sure, because the engine spins counterclockwise, you want this to be going this way, facing out. Right, don't forget the Loctite, just put the nut in like that. Alright, so let's get to put the car back in the opposite direction. Pretty basic. Hey, right, there it is. So you know it's not a very good engine if it doesn't have a removable uh, venturi. So, definitely not a high-end uh, engine. 28 Pro. Alright, get this in the uh, Mugen. Alright, with this car I've always had issues with the uh, engine bolts um, walking out. So I'm going to use my electronics cleaner, hopefully get any oil out of there. And I'm going to use a lot of Loctite, blue Loctite. Not red Loctite, Loctite, you'll never get it out. Alright, there it is. I gotta fire this thing up now, but I need to get some more nitro. 30% uh, nitro. And if this carb doesn't work out right, then I have, I have a lot of other carbs. So, 
I actually prefer these uh, plastic carbs. You know, it's uh, it keeps the uh, fuel cooler. All right. All right, guys. It's been about a week since I the last video. So I got the engine going. Well, I haven't even fired it up yet. So this thing hasn't fired up for 15, 20. I have no clue. I mean, I got it on eBay. This is probably about a 20 year old, 15 year old engine. It's hard to find specs on it. So got my bump box ready. Got it fuel primed. All right, let's go. just a little bit of charge just because I want to get this done before it gets dark out here all right Put the bump box on let's go yeah. So it's been about a week since I've uh, worked on this car. I'm continuing the video, but I think I'm going to switch the carburetor over to another car that I have. Uh, a plastic carburetor. And these are actually better. They uh, keep the, the fuel cooler. But what I don't like about this carburetor, you can see that down there, is this the curb idle is facing downwards, so I can't get to it. So I'm going to switch it to a carburetor that actually has a better <laughs> access to the, to the curb idle, so I can adjust it. Yeah, it's sort of a headache carburetor, man. It's like... Uh, and I'm trying to adjust and get this thing to idle, but I, it's like I can't get in there to, to do it. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna take this carburetor off and uh, I'm gonna put this one on there. All right, gotta go. The carburetor is way better. We're trying to work on the double 